G'day. This part is a shoulder screw with a 4mm hex socket and it's made of aluminium because it is only a prop. The proper ones will be made of steel but these are to be made to have photographs taken for the quality manual for the assembly of the parts. There you can see the part. Just turn thread part and then in a second operation we'll turn it, drill it and rotary broach it. This is a simulation of the way that I was going to do it in the first place. That's a canned stock removal cycle. And then that just cleans it up as a finishing cut. Then we thread it. And then we part it off. And that's the horrible result we got. You can see the really daggy beginning and end to the thread, so I decided to do it like this. This is just a couple of cuts to remove the material. Then we thread it. And then we go back and clean up the front chamfer and finish turning the part. And this gives much cleaner beginning and end to the thread as you'll see in a second seems a long way to go about it but it's how you get the best result you'll make the part and at the end of this process you'll see what the threads look like that's a carbide insert for turning aluminium which works reasonably well. I slowed the threading down to 1500 because I was having a problem getting a decent thread form but it was something else I could have done it at 3000 rpm as I have done in the past with 5mm threads. Now we do the front chamfer then go back and do the rear chamfer, finish turning the part. And part it off. Even though this is a very light part and it could possibly be dropped right off. I'd rather not because it's threaded and it's very easy to damage that thread if the part gets thrown around at all. It's just easier to break it off. And there you can see the start and end of the thread. Much cleaner, no burring, just a good thread. This is simulation of the second operation. We drill and then chamfer using the drill. That chamfer is required by the brooch to give it a lead in to get started. Unfortunately, I don't have a simulated part that's flat on the end like an end mill. Then we clean up, we hit another chamfer at the end of the broaching because this is the mess you get. When the broach goes in, it has to be started by the part because it's not powered. It's actually the part that powers, that causes the broach to rotate. And that's the sort of effect you get. And then you do a second chamfer and that cleans it up. That chamfer is possibly a bit big. But there you can see the hex and right down to the bottom of the hole there's the chips that the swarf that the rotary broach sorry makes which is why you go all the way in with the drill that's the first part stop that's a hex screw with a hex socket but the I was finding the part was actually falling into the hex and giving me a poor registration so I made another stop with a flat face so the end of the part just sat up against it Now we just turn and then drill and then broach. It's a CNC stub drill. 
they work really well. There's the chamfer to get the rotary brooch started. Rotary brooch by Slater Tools in the USA. I slowed this right down so you can see it's doing nothing and then it actually touches the part and the part makes it spin and once it gets register it just keeps going in and cutting that's the normal speed that it would cut at then we get rid of the swarf at the bottom of the hole put the chamfer in and the thing should look rather tidy just have a look at it a bit further away so you can see what the how close the gang tools get to the chuck it's always a bit scary setting those things up I tend to reduce the rapid to a very slow rapid for the first run of something like this so I've get, got time to see if anything's going to go bang there's the brooch going in again drill comes back gets rid of the swarf puts the chamfer on and that's what it looks like quite pleased with that I think that'll come up very nicely in the photos And thank you for watching.